The Witch's Hand by Peter Utten. Yikes, said George. What's that? And he pointed to a horrible brown crinkly thing pinned to the wall. Dad looked up. Oh, that. That's a... And he paused and looked down at his son. That's a... No, I can't tell you. It's too scary. Scary, cried George. Well, why is it scary? Tell me, tell me. Oh, all right then, said Dad, but it is scary, and he lifted George up on his lap. Well, said Dad, last night when you and your brother and Mommy and I were all in bed, I woke up suddenly. I sat up and stared into the darkness. I heard a sort of slither, slither, pat, pat, cackle, cackle. Someone or something was moving down the hall. I slipped out of bed and crept to the door. Listening, I heard again that slithery, pattery, crackling sound coming closer. I rushed on tiptoe to your bedroom. The door was slightly open. I peeped in and my hair stood on end as I gazed in horror. A huge witch dressed in a great black cloak and tall pointed hat was bending over your little beds. By the dim glow of your nightlight, I could see she was horribly ugly. She peered down at you with an awful grin. And from between her green occasional teeth squeezed a grotesque cackle. She lifted up a dirty sack and, as her bony hand reached out towards you, I tried to shop, stop you horrible hag, but all that came out was The witch stopped slowly turned and fixed me with a terrible bloodshot stare. Pointing a disgusting finger at me, she hissed the most evil hiss. Stand back. I must have these boys. Oh, no, you won't, I whispered. And staggering over to her, I gripped her large, warty wrists. Ugh, I thought. Just touching her made me shiver. We struggled for many long minutes in a dreadful silence until I was able to grab her and give her a good shake. Oh, glug, 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 she squawked and went limp and smelly. I've won, I thought. But suddenly, with blood-freezing cackle, the vile old woman began growing larger and stronger and more revolting by the second. Quiet, called Mommy, poking her head around the bedroom door. Don't wake the boys. Quick. I gasped, get the sword. Sword? Which sword? Asked Mommy. Yes, the witch sword. It's in the broom cupboard, I said. Oh, that sword, cried Mommy, and rushed from the room. You silly little man, croaked the witch, and bending her face down to mine, she blew a sickening cloud of stench and cobwebs into my face and grabbed me up. This is the end, I thought. But then Mommy appeared in the doorway wielding the great sword from the broom cupboard. Too late, hissed the witch, and stabbed at me with a dagger of vipers. Take that, cried Mommy, and with one bound, a great swish of the sword, she cut off the horrible hand, and it fell to the ground with its fearful weapon. Not fair, the witch screeched, and with a squelchy, sputtery sound, she started to sink down and down until, with a final watery slop, she disappeared. Whew, I said. That was close. And Mommy and I looked at you and your brother, still sleeping quietly in your beds. Look, said Mommy, pointing at the floor. There lay the horrible hag's hand, all brown and withered and crinkly. I'll pin that to the wall. I said, to remind me to lock those doors at night. Good idea, said Mommy. I'll make some tea. And that's the story of the witch's hand, said Dad. And George gazed up at the horrible brown crinkly thing. Oh, is it really a witch's hand? He whispered. No, replied Dad. And he reached up and picked it off the wall. It's a leaf I found in the park the other day. 
It was a beautiful reddish gold color, but now it's gone all horrible and brown and crinkly. And he crushed it to dust in his hand and dropped it in the garbage can. It was just a story, he laughed. George looked at the wall, and then he looked at the garbage can. Then he looked at his mommy and saw that she was smiling. Oh, what a scary story. Tell it again, cried George, and then he laughed too. Ha <laughs> ha